All right, today I'm going to do a quick video on the circle of fifths. Now, uh, first off, a few prerequisites. Uh, this is not an easy topic per se, so I would recommend that if you knew the notes on the guitar, and one thing you can do, we have a couple of free courses, guitargames.net, there's one on guitar notes. You can go there and do that. You just need to know basically the some of the names of the notes and how notes work on the instrument and also I would recommend knowing what intervals are and at least uh, half steps and whole steps which is covered in our also free getting started with music theory so you might check those out if you don't know what those are alright now circle of fifths first of all I think everyone knows what a circle is, but you might not know what <clears throat> a fifth is. So let's talk about that. So a fifth is an interval, and intervals in music work a little funny. Um, this is this is how we count. So first off, you might see you know C D E F G, <coughs> and that's a, a fifth. You notice there's no zero you might think okay it goes C to D that's one D to E that's two but no it's the number of letter names really that are in the interval so the distance from C to G is called a fifth let's do another one let's say you take G and you go G A B C D that's going to be a fifth one two three four five on the guitar, you probably recognize this. If you see these two notes played together, this is a fifth. You might see this written like F5 or called an F power chord. And if you can count from most letter names and just count up, so like say D, D, E, F, G, A, gives you a fifth. There's only one exception to worry about, and that's the note B. And the funny thing about B is that it goes up to F sharp. So remember that it has to do with the fact that there's no B sharp and no E sharp, and both of those are contained within this space. So B to F sharp. All right, now, next, the circle itself. So I took the uh, liberty of pre-drawing my circle, and you should do this on a page. I would, I would practice doing this quite often. And then what we're going to do is basically make a clock. So start here. I kind of divide it up into, you know, four spaces. And then I put the little ticks in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the note C. And then we're going to go by fifths. So a fifth above C, C, D, E, F, G. And a fifth above G, G, A, B, C, D. And so on and so forth. Um, here's our B, so we know we go to F sharp and not to F. Now, at this point, you could call this F sharp, and you could also call it G flat, because the note that's one above F is also one below G. So I'm going to switch over to flats, and you'll see why in just a little bit here. And keep going. So G flat. Now, a fifth above G flat, I'm going to stick with flat. So G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, we'll call. Okay. And then D flat goes up to A flat, E flat, and we'll keep going here, B flat, F. And then if you've done it correctly, you should get F, and then F, a fifth up, is C. So that means success. Now, what's the point of this? Uh, it's beautiful circle there, but by itself it doesn't really mean much. Now, the primary use of the circle is to find key signatures and scales. So let's talk about those real quick. Now, 
Most of you are probably familiar with what a scale is. It's a collection of notes that fit well together. They're kind of centered around a certain letter, like C scale. The root of it is C, and the notes all t kind of gravitate towards C. And scales are constructed using whole steps and half steps. So if you remember back to our prerequisites, knowing what those are would be good. So a whole step basically is two frets on the guitar. And so we'll see a whole step between these, two whole steps, then a half step, another whole step, another whole step. So all major scales are constructed from a pattern of whole steps and half steps. And we get whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, this gives us our scale. We have one of each letter name and no repeated letters. Now, for the key of C, that means n that we have just the regular letter names. Now, if we do another key, let's take D. We go whole, whole, up. E to F is a half step, because remember, there's no E sharp. So I have to make this an F sharp. And I cleverly left myself a space. <laughs> All right. Now I need a half step. So F sharp to G, sure enough, is a half step. One fret. And I keep going. Ah, here we go again. So B to C is not a whole step. I have to make this a sharp to make it a whole step. And then C sharp to D is a half step, so it matches the pattern. Now, this is a D major scale. You'll notice again, there's one of each letter name. There's no F and F sharp. There's no C and C sharp. It's just one of each. But there's some accidentals. There's some sharps. And some keys have sharps and some keys have flats. Now, what is often done is we use key signatures. Now what's a key signature? Well, this is an abbreviated way of describing this scale. So since I know there's going to be one of each letter name, and I know that there's two sharps, I can just say that the key of D has this key signature. Right there. And I, if I say, okay, the key signature for the key of D is two sharps, F and C, then I know how to make the scale. Put one of every letter name, and I adjust F and C. All right, now how does this apply to our friend, the circle of fifths? 